Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video I will tell you about an interstellar comet called 3i Atlas. This is a rare object tracking right through our solar system, making it a must-do for any astrophotographer's bucket list. In the video I will explain where and when you have to point your telescope if you want to spot this object. And let's dive into the video by talking about interstellar comet first. 3i Atlas is an interstellar comet that was discovered on July 1, 2025 by NASA's Atlas telescope in Chile. It was first called A11PL3Z. The discovery data goes back to June 14th from multiple observatories. Once astronomers gathered more observational data, they built an orbit for the object that happens to follow a hyperbolic trajectory with an eccentricity of about 6.13, which basically means that 3 Atlas doesn't orbit the Sun and just strikes right through the solar system, leaving us forever. That is what makes this object unique, as it's a third known body that has origins outside of our solar system. The previous two objects were 1i Oumuamua, discovered in 2017, and 2i Borisov, discovered in 2019. Moving at a speed of about 68 km per second, the comet will approach the closest distance to the Sun on October 29, 2025, at approximately 1.36 astronomical units, which is somewhere in between the orbits of Earth and Mars. Talking about the size of 3i Atlas, um, there is still not enough data to say for certain, but it can vary from less than a kilometer up to 24 kilometers in diameter. At the beginning of the discovery, the nature of 3i Atlas was unclear, but later astronomers noticed an active comet and dust shell, telling us that 3i Atlas is a comet. I really hope that there will be observations done with larger telescopes like Hubble or JWST later on, as the comet is getting closer so that we can learn more information about it. Now, can you take images of 3i Atlas with an amateur telescope? I believe it is possible, but there are some limitations. There are different observation results of the comet's magnitude available now, and currently it averages at around 17, which means that you can only observe this comet by taking long exposure pictures on a relatively big telescope. I believe you can already try to take a picture of this comet using at least an 8 inch telescope or larger. Just consider that you want to shoot long exposures under darkest skies possible, outside of city lights, pollution, and with no moon in the sky. In the back of my mind, I actually believe that you could practice taking images with a smaller telescopes like 5 or 6 inches in aperture, and this is what I'm planning to do uh, in a couple of weeks once there is no bright moon in the sky. Talking about results, I would not expect much in terms of visual appearance. On the other hand, the fact that an amateur can take a picture of this rare nature object is phenomenal. As I mentioned earlier, the comet is getting closer and closer to the Sun, meaning that the conditions of its visibility will be improving as well. Here is the graph that shows the comet's brightness might be as high as 11 magnitude, which is something that you can actually observe visually through a telescope, but here is the catch, guys. The comet will pass too close to the Sun to observe with the ground-based telescopes. And we pretty much have just enough time until September 2025 to observe this comet. By early December 2025, it will reappear on the other side of the Sun, but the brightness of the comet will be much dimmer than 11's magnitude, of course. So, how do you find where to point your telescope to photograph this interstellar visitor? At the time of filming this video, the comet is going through the constellation Sagittarius near the Milky Way center, along with the Serpent Sagittarius border. And on the screen, basically, you can see the map of uh, the comet's path. And talking about the coordinates, there's plenty of information available online, and I will leave a link to one of the sources in the description down below. So basically, what you need to do, let's say it's July 17th, you're going to one of the sources, taking coordinates, then putting these coordinates whether into the NINA or the ASIA or whatever their uh, sequencer you're using, then telescope slurring to the targets, you're taking, depends on your rig, but maybe 60 to 120 second exposures, uh, you're taking a few of them, and then hopefully you'll be able to resolve the comet. Now, I will try to take images of this comet in a couple of weeks when there is no bright moon in the sky, and hopefully the weather will be cooperating as well. I'm planning to use two telescopes for this project. The first one is my 10-inch Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope that's behind me right now, and that will be imaging at f6.6, 
The second telescope will be my 122mm SV550 APO telescope that will be taking images at f5.6. So I don't know what kind of results I'm going to get. I really hope I'm going to get something. If you're interested in following my journey, then consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Instagram and Astrobin page where I post more images and observations. I might film another video on my attempt to capture it or maybe consider doing a live stream. Just guys, let me know in the comment section below what type of content you would be more interested in watching. Alright guys, this is all I got for this video. Hope it was useful to you and if you want to read more information about the comment, then I left some links in the description down below to sources that I used to film this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time.